All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Raiders on the podcast here, Raiders Student Media. We've got our friends in the studio today, Dylan Zepp, Jason Sank, Ramsey Reith, Chris Jacoby, Tom Dry, and myself, Jacob Batar. Got a full slate here today, gentlemen, so let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about the NFL here first. The NFL draft is now in full effect with the season being over. Justin Fields, he unfollowed the Chicago Bears. And so the question that everybody wants to know Caleb Williams or Justin Fields, who would you guys prefer? And if Fields does go, where does he end up? I prefer Justin Fields at the moment because I believe you should stick with the quarterback. You should give him multiple years to develop under a system with a new offensive coordinator this year. Unlock Justin Fields, but Caleb Williams, shout out. Number one prospect in the draft, aside from Marvin Harrison Jr. Great arm strength, can throw on the move and off platform. He has an outstanding accuracy across all three levels. I mean, I watched him play live, but I watched a little bit of tape. You know, just how to look in on him. Yeah, he's talented, but I like Justin Fields. Justin Fields has the potential to be premier dual threat quarterback. He had 1,143 rushing yards in 2022 and 657 this past season and 12 total touchdowns on the ground in those two years. He can obviously improvise and use his legs. But through the air this past season, only 2,500 yards, 16 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. He's been mediocre throwing the ball all of his career. But at Ohio State, he showed his arm strength. He has the potential. And if he does end up going somewhere, I think Atlanta makes sense there with Zach Robinson as their new offensive coordinator. I, I think I want Justin Fields to stay on the Bears. I think he fits there. I, we've seen what his potential is. His Some of the plays he's made where he uses his legs to get out of trouble have been incredible. I think they keep Fields. They take the number one weapon in this draft, Marvin Harrison Jr. at one and an offensive lineman at nine. They reinforce this offense with a great weapon and a great lineman, and they make Fields work. I don't think that happens, unfortunately. I think they do trade Fields, and I, I will bring that up in a sec. I think they take Caleb Williams at one. I think they'll take probably a, a weapon for him at nine, their second pick. The key is where does Fields go if he gets traded? And this is when I want to bounce to either Tom or Ramsey here. Because one of the teams that have come up a lot in that is the Steelers. So I, I do want to genuinely ask, would you want Justin Fields in a quarterback competition over in Pittsburgh? Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it at all. Like I genuinely wouldn't mind it. I still have faith in Kenny Pickett, and he's been great for us. I mean, all you Browns fans, he's going to admit, in tiny hands, he wears gloves to throw football. And we couldn't even throw football. But I I'm, wouldn't. I'm not in the NFL. <laughs> I can throw football. Eh. Yes, yes, we're not in the NFL. Kenny Pickett is good, and he's he was 14-10 and 10 as a starter, and I still have faith in Pickett. But I wouldn't mind bringing Fields over to Pittsburgh to have a QB competition. I really wouldn't mind that at all. And I, I think that's where it bounces back to Fields should stay in Chicago. He has potential. I just need to find I him. I do think he should stay in Chicago, too. I've talked to many Bears fans, and they still want him, and they don't understand why they don't keep him. The the other part of that is you could trade the number one overall pick and get significantly more. I I think I mean it was kind of touched on. I think the situation where like b- between the Steelers and uh, Pickett and the Bears and uh, Fields, I mean, if you get a competent a competent OC, a, a good OC can give anyone a chance to win. They haven't had a good OC. But I do have some stats comparing uh, Pickett and Fields. They're not, uh, honestly, they're not that much different, right? So 40 games played for Fields, uh, almost uh, 7,000 yards, 40 passing touchdowns. The passing touchdowns to attempt percentage, uh, 4%. So very little compared to, you know, the league average. QB rating, 82. Pickett, 25 games, uh, almost 4,500 yards passing, 13 touchdowns, 1% uh, TD to attempt ratio, 4 rushing touchdowns, and uh, a 79 overall QB rating. But the thing that's not factored in here and the thing that people tend to forget, Fields turns the ball over a lot. In those 40 games, he has almost 70 turnovers. In Pickett's 25 games, he has 19. So that's a big thing to consider. But I really don't think that considering the pieces that Pittsburgh needs to fill, especially with, you know, they released Mason Cole earlier this afternoon. They need a new center. They need to continue developing the offensive line. I think it's more important to 
you know, save that second pick or third round pick, whatever it's going to take to get Fields. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, Tom. I do not want Justin Fields on the Steelers as a Browns fan. Um, I think he's going to stay with the Bears. I think he should. Bears need a lot more than a quarterback, and I think they should use those picks. Like Tom said, maybe trade the first pick, get a lot more later in the draft, and find the pieces that they're missing. Justin Fields even said about the the Bears situation, just because you unfollow a girl on Instagram doesn't mean you're not messing with her. So I don't think that really means anything. I think it, you know, he just might have like needed a break on social media from everything that's going on, especially in this talk where everybody's mentioning him in the Bears. I think he just needed a little space to not deal with that, get his head right. I think Justin Fields ends up staying with the Bears. Yeah, you can't blame a guy like that. I, I, I completely agree. Like, just because he unfollowed the Bears doesn't mean he doesn't want to be there. And this is where I stand with Justin Fields, okay? He was dealt one of the crappiest hands, I think, really, when he was drafted to Chicago. When has Chicago ever developed a quarterback properly, guys? Like, can we ever think of Chicago? It's been a long time. Jay yeah. Cutler. Jay Cutler. <laughs> for a little bit. For a little bit there. For a little bit. <laughs> so, Justin Fields came into a terrible situation with absolutely no help whatsoever. And then, when he finally got a little bit of help, he got DJ Moore this past year. He played better, I would say, in this last year. I mean, he got injured, yeah, he missed a couple games, but he and DJ Moore have really good connections. So do he and Cole Komet now. And then also, too, surprising here if you're the Chicago Bears, when you actually add talent to your defense, your defense starts to play better, and Justin Fields doesn't have to go out there and score 35 points just to even compete in a game. So when they added Montez Sweat, that team really turned it around, and they finished the season out really well. And make this make sense as well. They're keeping Matt Eberflus, their head coach. How could you get rid of Justin Fields if that's the case too? Like, why would you do that? I don't know. But I think since they're the Chicago Bears, they are going to give up on Justin Fields. For all the reasons mentioned above, it just makes too much sense to keep Justin Fields, so they're going to get rid of him. And Go ahead, go ahead, Rams. No, no, that's, that's, he's valid. No, that's very valid. No, I agree with you. It's just it annoys me that the Bears uh, are like that. Like, it's yeah. just have some common sense and keep your young QB that you can develop, which the Steelers are doing with Pickett. Mm-hmm. Keep him. He'll develop. Yeah. He's shown promising uh, plays, and he's been promising. He'll improve. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's young. Keep building around him. Yep. And that's the whole point of a rebuild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're starting to rebuild other pieces around him, and then they're going to reset again with the quarterback. I don't really think that makes too much sense. But I do think they're going to go Caleb Williams. Don't think he's going to be in Pittsburgh, though. I don't think Justin Fields is going to Pittsburgh. I think the Las Vegas Raiders are going to go after Mr. Justin Fields. And Antonio Pierce, I would love to see an Antonio Pierce and Justin Fields um, match right there. I think that would be great for the Raiders, personally. And I'm going to be rooting for Justin Fields wherever he's at because I think he's a really talented quarterback. Except Pittsburgh. Except Pittsburgh, yeah. <laughs> Except, well, maybe to an extent. I, I might root for him. When, when he's not playing when he's not playing, he's the not, playing the not playing the Browns. Not playing the Browns. Not playing the Browns. All right, but we will get – on to the next segment, kind of touching more a little bit here on the draft. At this point, guys, the combine's just a little bit a little bit of ways out, just about a week. How many quarterbacks are we thinking are going to get drafted in the first round this year? I'm going to say three are locks, but there could be potentially six. But I'm just going to say Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May are locks. And Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, and Bull Nix all have the potential to be first-round picks, but they are not guaranteed. So they'll all go within the first three rounds, obviously. I'm going to say at least three, at most six. I think that's pretty spot on. The list of teams that need quarterbacks, the Bears are obviously the big question mark, but the teams that absolutely do, the Commanders, the Patriots, and the Falcons, who are picks two, three, and eight, I have to assume unless Fields goes to the Falcons, all three of those picks will be quarterbacks. You got Denver at 12. Who knows what's happening with Russell Wilson at this point? You have Vegas at 13, who are just in a weird situation. And then, to a bit further extent, just because they have, I think they have where they will sign quarterbacks, you have Minnesota, who I'm pretty sure will re-sign Kirk Cousins, Tampa, who pretty verbally committed to Baker Mayfield, and then whatever's going on in Pittsburgh. I I don't know at this point. I, I know you guys have fun there. But I, I agree. We I think will. three quarterbacks are guaranteed. Those first three names, May, Daniels, and Williams, will be off the board by the end of round one. Yeah, I, I... Yeah, Chris literally went uh, right on, spot on there of three, I think. But the whole Steelers quarterback situation, it, it really does, up, it really does tick me off that oh, Kirk Cousins is gonna come, Russell Wilson is gonna come, but what about Justin Fields? But what about Arthur Smith and Ryan Tannehill? It's like 
so sorry. Stop! <laughs> I won't bring it up again. I don't want saying. eight quarterbacks projected to go to Pittsburgh, FanDuel. Please stop, FanDuel, in Vegas. I'm getting tired of these betting odds. Eight-man quarterback. But, dear. Oh. Vegas is a bunch of nonsense, dude. It, it, it is. I'm getting tired of these betting odds popping up. What do they know? What do they know? They, know. they just they? want money. Vegas. They, yeah, they, exactly. just want, they just want They're money. They're juicing it. They're literally juicing it. They just want money. But, like Chris said, Three quarterbacks in the draft in the first round. I agree, Mr. Chris. I'm I'm tempted to go. I'm really tempted to go four or five, truthfully. Whoa there. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I, I think this depends a lot on what happens with Russ and Kirk Cousins and those, you know. I think those are really my two big ones. But I think Michael Penix, either early second or late first, I think. Bo Nix is a solid pick, probably top 10, top 15. Then from there, obviously, you have Caleb Williams, who's a stud. Jaden Daniels showed a lot last year, I think. And then finally, Drake May. I think, I think Drake May is going to be a New England Patriot. Man. If, they, yeah. if they actually develop, <laughs> that could be scary. But we'll see. I don't have a lot to say about this, but I will agree. I think four. I think Penix definitely deserves to be a first-round pick. I mean, he's a generational quarterback, and he's doing it as a lefty, which you don't see very often except for maybe Tua. Um, Michael. Unless there's a team that's looking for, like, ten passes a game and all the other plays the entire game are runs, I don't think McCarthy will go in the first round. Because yeah. that's pretty much what he did at Michigan, but uh, yeah. I, I could see May, Daniels, Williams, and Penix all going in the first round. Yeah. And, and I will give a quick shout out, helping in the development of growing future, probably number one pick, Caleb Williams, former Mount Union uh, safety, their defensive coordinator at USC, Alex Grinch. So love to see that. There you go. There you go. Shout out, shout out, Grinch. Shout out, Grinch. Well, Thank well, you. Well. <laughs> well, 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 indeed. I think this draft is going to be very similar to the Baker Mayfield draft. Do you remember the Baker Mayfield draft that was Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson went super late, and then, of course, the man that's going to make everybody pay, Josh Rosen, getting drafted right there with five quarterbacks. <laughs> Six Super Bowl. I think it's going to be five quarterbacks, personally, that are going to get drafted in the first round. Do I think it's justified? No, not entirely, but I think that five are going to end up getting picked. I agree it's going to be Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May. They're going to be guaranteed. Bo Nix, to me, is almost a near lock as well. I think all of his experience at college is going to be very beneficial. And then... I don't agree with it, but I think J.J. McCarthy is going to be like in the first round as well. I don't necessarily think he's too much of a stud. He might be the Josh Rosen of this class, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. J.J. McCarthy will do nothing. And I, I, I read an article on CBS before I got here. Some uh, analyst said we should trade up to get a higher pick to get J.J. McCarthy. Was the analyst Harbaugh himself? Because Harbaugh at one point stated that <laughs> no, no, McCarthy no, no, should no. be the number I, one I, I'd have to look at it again, but I was just puzzled reading that. Hot take. The Chargers should trade Herbert and draft uh, J.J. <laughs> oh, my Harbaugh. God. Just no, so we could pick no, up another no, quarterback I'm, on FanDuel? I'm just kidding. Not really. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Enough of right. these quarterbacks. En- enough with these quarterbacks indeed we're gonna move on forward here to a topic that's going to be very sensitive to a bunch of us here in the room cleveland browns they are rumored to be thinking thinking that's the key thinking of releasing nick chubb right now guys thoughts on this i'm going to shoot that rumor down mary Kay cabot reported yesterday the browns have no plans to cut nick chubb this offseason and they'll reconstructure restructure his contract to where he can earn money through incentives so browns fans don't worry Mary Kay Cabot, she's seen the rumors. It was, I believe, it was a few uh, guys on a PFF podcast. I'm not for sure who it was, but yeah, I seen that too, and I'm like, I highly doubt it. And they were saying David Njoku as a cut candidate. Yeah, I saw that. They, uh, Mary Kay insane. Cabot, shut that down Ooh, real quick. So the Pro Football Focus. Yeah, thank you, Mary Those, Kay Cabot. Thank you. I hate, I hate Pro Football Focus. The, the, the short answer to this is no. The Browns are not that insane. The long answer is the amount of cap space that just got added. The Browns know they have the number one, one of the number one running backs in the NFL. He's coming off of injury, but he's still Nick Chubb. 
the Browns are not that crazy, they will keep uh, Nick Chubb. I, I'd give him. I'd give him number one. I, I do think Chubb is the best running. You're going to give him that over CMC. That's. Totally uh, I, it's a tight I, argument. There. Nah, I, I'd give it to Chubb. I'd give it to Chubb. I think from a runner's year. standpoint, Chubb's the best yeah, running back absolutely. in the NFL. I think all around is probably CMC because Chubb's a good receiver, but he's not. He's not a Christian McCaffrey receiver. So all around, I'm probably going McCaffrey, but Chubb definitely number one runner. Sir. Other Steelers, Homer, you're laughing over there. What, what are we thinking? Uh, it was, it was, I made a dark joke. Oh, let's oh, not boy. hear that. Oh, boy. Let's, let's not, not hear that. that. Hey, hey. Well, you've lost your talking <laughs> privileges, Tom. <laughs> he, he said CMC. I was like, well, what did they do last year? Um, anyway. Go All Steelers. Right. Um, anyway. I, uh, no, I mean, if, I, if I'm the Browns, I, I agree. I think incentive, an incentive-laced uh, you know, deal would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, truthfully, I think most deals should be structured that way. But, and here, one, one more thing on the whole, like, quote unquote, sources say thing. That's a bunch <laughs> of garbage. It, it's always garbage. 95% of it's garbage. I wish it would stop. It's a joke. <laughs> it's pathetic. It's bad for the game. <laughs> not, not, not to sound like Don Cherry on, uh, t- on w- whatever, uh, on TSN, but I mean, I'm, I'm upset. That's annoying. It's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> tell him. <laughs> wow. Tell, tell him, him yeah. like it is, Tom. What do you think, Mr. Jason? Oh, about the Browns releasing Nick Tubb? Man, if if they do, then don't, don't worry. the ghost of Art Modell still lives, <laughs> and we need to bring the Ghostbusters <laughs> out because we, I mean, like, they, I, I've been hearing talks like, we're going to get rid of Chubb, we're going to get rid of Cooper, we're going to get rid of Najoku. It's like, what are we doing? Are we really doing this just no, to keep no, Deshaun no. Watson's no. contract? Say, say it again. Like, the, it again. the rumors are crazy. I really hope they're not yeah, true. It's not because Mary well, Kay reported. Oh, RB Mary Kay reported. Okay. She said <laughs> no plans for any of that. None of that nonchalant BS. I sure hope so, man. Like, they, they got to bring the team back to Baltimore if they get rid of Nick Chubb. <laughs> I'm sorry. In favor of Watson's contract. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have to. If that's just, the case. I just laugh at that. Would, would you guys be willing to accept the probably $60 million in dead cap space to get rid of uh, – Hudson? Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. Absolutely. I wouldn't. I would. 60 million is crazy. I'd still cap. take it. 100%. I think you bring Flacco ba- back as a backup if Watson's really bad. You just bench Watson. But I don't think he's going to be bad. I think he'll be. He's starting Wait. to have a few tune up games. So. Isn't Jacoby Brissett free agent? Yeah. Free agent. Bring, back bring, Jacoby bring Jacoby. And Jacoby. And, and, and he's like, Jacoby Brissett I back in there. Listed as, we were listed as the best destination for yeah, him. Get him back in there. I really hope he He played back. better football than Deshaun did. Yes, did. Yeah. Brissett's like pretty good. I don't. I think he's been disrespected. Yeah, Brissett, Brissett's solid. Yeah, Deshaun ruined too. his career. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Chubb. I mean, if he gets cut, it's strictly like strictly because of Deshaun. That's the only reason why. Because Deshaun's taking up so much cap space that they just got to cut Chubb. The Browns are so worried, I think, to admit their mistake so far in giving Deshaun Watson that much money. And then they and then yeah. Nick Chubb would be the scapegoat for all the loyalty that he's shown. I would I would personally maybe not watch the Browns anymore and, if he gets it cut. would be tough. Yeah, it would it be would very be tough. tough. Love Jerome Ford, all respect in the world to Jerome Ford, yeah. but what he showed us, I think, is he's a complimentary running back. He's not Preach. a starting running back. Preach it. Yeah. He's a second string running back. He's kind of going to be Kareem Hunt's replacement. He's not going to yes. be Nick Chubb's replacement and, anytime yeah. soon. Can I add something to that real quick? Mm-hmm. I would love to see the Browns add DeAndre Swift. A Nick Ooh, Chubb, DeAndre geez, Swift, one two so punch. Please don't make that. You up. would have me. I, <laughs> cool. I would be front row, and you would not know like what I'd be doing celebrating seeing that. I would oh, be yeah. going crazy, taking my shirt off, having my Nick Chubb signed jersey. Whoa, Chris. Chris. All right, quit getting ahead of yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, the DeAndre Swift thing could possibly happen yeah. because a topic that was brought forth by Mr. Tom Dry right before we got on this podcast, the NFL is upping the salary cap. So, gentlemen, quickly here, if you want to touch on the salary cap, what we think that's going to be here for the NFL. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, it's going to open up a lot more money, obviously. And the Browns, like, Andrew Barry is a cap master. He's going to get us 40 to $50 million in cap space. He does it every year. Restructures, signing bonuses, he'll figure it out. Like incentive based deals, you know what I'm talking about. Those are huge. Those are clutch. So yeah, DeAndre Swift is a Cleveland Brown. That's all I gotta say. The, looking at the change in the cat space since about COVID has been insane. So 2020 was 198 million. It went down the next year, 182. But since then, we've had 208 million, 224 million, and now the jump of 
thirty million up to two hundred and fifty five million. It was thirty that is million. Insane. A jump. Thirty million jump. Thirty million jump. That's huge for every single team. That's actually insane. I will not be surprised to see a lot of like record contracts in the next few okay. years. Can't wait to keep setting a new record every each year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kenny Pickett's gonna reset the quarterback market with an extension. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna break it harder than Deshaun did. After he <laughs> after we have a stairway to seven, yes. I don't. I don't even know what to say because, I mean, that's wild. I mean, you guys. First off, the stairway to seven. I'm here for it. Do I think it'll happen? No. <laughs> but the slander from the Browns fans. The Browns. What's wrong? Really? The Browns. It's the off season. This is when we're happy. Yeah. Yeah. There's, There's always next wait, year. There's wait, always wait next till year. Week right one. Now, yeah, wait till they, week they, one. They've been seeing that for a while. Week one. Yeah. We're going to Brazil versus the Eagles, possibly. That, that, I see keep that? seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. That we're like be weird. one of the teams considered on a Friday night. All right, I'm just. But little. no, for real though. Shout out the con man, Omar Khan. He's gonna cook. He cooked today. <laughs> Abdi- uh, uh, addition by subtraction is just a fantastic thing. <laughs> 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 Getting rid of Mason Cole was pretty good. Yes, that, that excuse was good. excuse my Freudian slip. I feel like football makes us channel a lot of personal feelings on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I no, I, just I, sports I little, in general. I get a little mad sometimes when I think about certain <laughs> players. <laughs> Get a little mad. I don't like it. We're them. sports fans. It's, it's passion. Yeah, it I guess. <laughs> moving right. on. Mo- moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Wait, wait. I'm just <laughs> but yeah, salary cap definitely going to have some big implications around the NFL, and we are all here for it. But gentlemen, going to transition now into the NBA. The All Star Game was this past weekend. Big sigh for me as the All Star Game, the highest scoring ever. 211 to 186 was the final in favor of the East All Stars, which re- received much criticism at the same time. Gentlemen, is the NBA All Star game dead and how can we fix it? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's dead. <laughs> it's dead. Uh, fixing it, good luck. But I would love to see one on one tournaments. One on one tournaments would mm. go crazy. Or even have fans or celebrities participate in like a slam dunk contest or three point contest. <laughs> so just Put me Ke- on there. Kevin Hart versus Draymond Green yes, went crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> and Kevin Hart won. So I'd love to see more of that, but I don't know for sure. It's dead. All I got to say. I don't know if there's a way to fix it. I, I've been trying to watch more basketball. I watched the second half of this All Star game sitting with my boys at Buffalo Wild Wings. Woo. We're sitting there. And I just watch the score just keep going. To, I don't watch much basketball. I'm like, I don't, I don't watch much. But have the All Star Game ever overall hit 400 points? It was genuinely close to happening. It's called a lack of defense. Yeah, I can tell you, Mr. Zepp, what you watched at B Dubs was not basketball uh, at all. Not no. basketball at all. Yeah, you got you got Donovan Mitchell shooting, running, running gun threes, one footer threes. It was cool. It was cool. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's just showing off. That's not real basketball at this point. The game is deader than dead. Yeah. To put it bluntly. I mean, it's, it's I, I think, like we said, it's a shame. It's a, it's a <laughs> disgrace to basketball, mm-hmm. to anyone that's ever played the game. E- even people that play pickup, they play harder than that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would have to agree with that, yeah. I, I think I the, myself. I think the biggest way to fix it, though, I think – Kind of like what the MLB did for a while. You got you got to give home court advantage. Oh yeah. For the final. I th- yeah. I think that's one of the only ways you'll get everybody to play hard, unless you really for some reason hike up what the winner gets in comparison to what the loser gets for playing in the game. But otherwise, it'll it'll keep uh, being a disgrace to basketball. <laughs> Ramsey slowly turning the mic towards me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, first off, I will agree with Tom there. I think there should be some sort of incentive. I do like the idea of the home court advantage like the MLB did. I don't think they do it no, anymore. They, do anymore. they don't they do, don't it, do anymore, it anymore. But that was the coolest part about the MLB All-Star game. I think the NBA should adopt something similar. <coughs> now it's a rant about the All-Star weekend in general. When I was a kid, when I, I'm trying to do some backwards math here, I was like 13 or 14 years old. Like From 2015 to like 2018 – all-Star Weekend was like, it, that took up my entire weekend. Like, it was just awesome to see every event, even the Celebrity All-Star Game. But now it's just like everything except the three-point contest is just a complete dud. Like, the Skills Challenge, they changed it. It's not good anymore. Three-point contest is still good. Dunk contest, 
without Mac McClung hasn't been good since 2016. <laughs> and then the All Star game, it's just it's getting progressively worse every year. We had a little thing when they switched back from the East West format to the draft format, and they added the, for lack of a better term, Kobe rule, with the 24 points in the fourth quarter. That was probably the best thing they could have done. That was really good because they added some sort of like, not incentive to win, but in a way like they they had an end goal. It wasn't just the game ends and whoever wins wins. It's you have to reach the score. And both teams, or it's one set score and both teams have to reach it. So now they're like, well, we got to, you know, actually play some defense, maybe follow someone who's on a fast break. Like that saved the all-star game for a couple of years. Now they changed it back. Now that whole thing is gone, and we saw what happened. I mean, it was just not fun to watch. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna self-proclaim myself as a basketball super fan. I've been watching the NBA the most. I, I'm diehard everything. I literally could not get myself to watch a single second of the All Star game. I did not because I saw this coming. I saw it coming that everybody would. It would just be all about scoring. That's not basketball. Basketball, to me, is what they did with the Kobe rules. Giannis and LeBron, I will never forget those moments in in uh, that All-Star game where they were locking each other up down the stretch because they were playing for everything on the line. Like That's what I want to see. I want to see a pickup game with the best basketball players in the world. So, I mean, I the game is completely dead. It's a disgrace. Like I cannot even say as an NBA fan that I watched a single second of it. Every other bit of All-Star weekend, I did watch. Dunk Contest... Eh, it was okay. They they were a little too generous with Jalen Brown's scores. <laughs> yes, yeah, I agree with that. And then Mac McClung, Mac McClung did good, but he didn't oh, yeah. do. I don't think he did as good as he did in his initial debut last year. But it, it's it's tough to top that. That yeah. dunk over Shaq though. Like, oh yeah, that, that was impressive. That was it was impressive. Yeah, he still did a great job. Three point contest was awesome. It, the Steph and Sabrina battle too. Oh, yeah, that, that, that that was, was insane. That, 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 that was, was something that I forgot was really to mention. Good. That was really cool, especially with how close it was. Yeah, that was really good. Sabrina really showed her own in that one too. So shout out Sabrina Ionescu for that. That was a great job by her. And then even the Rising Stars Challenge, and this is what I'm getting at here. So I agree with the home court advantage to kind of change things up with the All-Star game. But I don't know if you guys have paid attention to how they do the Rising Stars Challenge. They do like a mini little tournament, like how they do the NHL All-Star game as well. That might not even be the worst thing ever. Instead, like you still might not get a lot of defense, but you might just get like little snippets of, oh, first team to 50 or whatever advances or something like that. So you're not getting the 211 necessarily like the East All Stars did. But you can get like those little mini tournaments. That might be a cool way to kind of boost some stuff here for the NBA. But the game's dead. I just can't, I can't even, I could probably talk for about two hours about how much I hate the NBA All Star game. Because it's just horrible. You get the best basketball players in the world. They don't even compete. Imagine Legends of the Game, because this also happened. Larry Bird and Dr. J, Julius Irving, literally went into the locker rooms and just asked, hey, can we have somewhat of a competitive basketball game? Those guys looked at NBA Legends dead in the eye and said, nah, I'm good. And then they went out and put out whatever that product was on the court. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. But... Kind of piggybacking off that, guys, real quickly, which professional sports league do you guys feel has the best all-star game and really the worst as well? Uh, the best? Major League it's Baseball. Major league baseball. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Game-wise. And game the wise, wise, worst? Yes. The NFL. Yeah. Okay. Is, There's my point. As soon as they change exactly it to the Pro Bowl games, I mean, we're watching NFL players play dodgeball and uh, flag football. They're, they're trying. At least that, they're trying something different because the old – Pro Bowl was awful. I enjoy. They're trying to change it up, and I'll give them credit, but it's still no. Bring I, back Sean Taylor. Bre- yep, I was about to say. I was about to say that. That was that. the best Pro Bowl play in history. That was it's hard great. I think. See, it's weird. I'm kind of tied for both the worst and the best. Mm-hmm. It's weird. I think the NFL and NBA are easily the two worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I, I love. Uh, the MLB All Star Game, but underrated. I mean, I, I know you guys aren't really hockey fans, besides Ramsey. The NHL All Star Game is a heck of a lot of fun, dude. I would say, I uh, enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy the All Star Weekend for NHL and the player drafts. And but there, there were some players like Nikita Kucherov who were just like 
being a bum in the skills competition for fastest skater and the puck handling. But the all-star game is fun because it's three on three. Three on three is fun because it's open, more space, a lot of shooting, a lot of scoring, a lot of goals, a lot of uh, a lot of that. And it's just fun. I enjoy it. I personally I enjoy the, it. I love the uh, Yes, I, I enjoy that part too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, we're done. We're done. We're done. Oh, yeah, but I think most of us agree that definitely MLB's got the best game. I think the NBA's got, still got the best product like throughout the weekend because they got plenty of events. And, yes, yeah, sometimes they're not very good at all. But when they do hit, they're very, oh, very yeah. good. Very, very good. 2016 was peak. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. NFL, to me, though, has got the worst. I mean, come on now. Like, you're literally playing a game where just grown men hit each other. Somebody's bound to get hurt. I remember when they said, oh, we're doing flag football just because we don't want people to get injured. And I'm pretty sure Miles Garrett injured his toe, like, playing the game. So, you're going to get injured playing a game, like, potentially. Like, there's always an injury risk. Just go back to hitting each other, for crying out loud. Play the actual game. But anyway... A lot of things came out of the NBA All-Star Weekend as well. A lot of interesting storylines. So we're going to touch on just a couple here, guys. LeBron James says he wants to be a Laker for the rest of his career. So we're going to play a little game here. LeCap or LeTruth? Is LeBron telling the truth or not? I'm going to say LeCap because, oh, my dearest LeBron, my sweet pookie bear. From the (laughs) illustrious courts of Akron, he emerges not just the king, but the monarch of basketball and fused fantasies. Picture this. Four NBA titles adoring his royal basketball robes, each championship a love letter written in slam dunks and three-pointers. The way he orchestrated that spectacular 3-1 comeback against the Warriors, it's as if he knew my heart raced in sync with every dribble. And oh, when he sealed a deal with that triumphant declaration, Cleveland, this is for you, my basketball crazed soul, felt a surge. LeBron, my glorious obsession. The one who turns rebounds into poetic verses and fast breaks in the symphony of love for the game. Long live Pookie James, the ruler of my hardwood dreams. I come home, baby. I was not going to say anything else as we kept talking NBA. What just happened? What? I, uh. Chris Chris sent me this at like, I think it was late one evening. You, uh, Chris, Chris read, read the one you wrote about me. Are you okay, Chris? I, I don't think we want to do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think we, we, need we don't want any more, no, man. No, no. Please, please. Uh, well, although I, I do agree with you, but that was a bit excessive. <laughs> <laughs> oh he's, my. he's passionate. He's wow. Passionate. That, wow. That, that's real <laughs> love. It was from the heart. That's true love. Was from the heart. That, that was quite that poetic. Was yeah, it. that was impressive. I'm not going to lie. What do you, I... I don't thinking? know how I feel about it. <laughs> you left us. I got, I got we're speechless. Derailed right now. on what I was gonna say. What do, you, what do you think his wife would say? I don't know. I, Mrs. I, LeBron James. I don't know. I was just do LeBron, not his wife. his wife. Yeah, that was. Savannah's got some competition, apparently. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Back, back to the original point. I'm going look cap. We know LeBron James. Love him as much as I do. Not as much as Chris, er, apparently, but he's a D1 capper. He, he's been doing this for a while. This man claimed that he listened to the Migos in 2010 when they didn't drop their first mixtape until 2011. He reads the first page of every book on every press conference ever. He's, oh, yeah. He, it was good book. I love the guy. I love what he did for Cleveland. He is not 100% a truth teller. Real, all slander aside, I think realistically – he ends up wherever Bronny ends up if yep. he gets drafted. Yeah. No, he's coming if to the he camps. gets drafted to the Lakers, yeah, he'll stay with the Lakers. But he will follow them wherever he gets drafted. Yeah. Yeah. This is such a look cap. Like, I can't even oh, yeah. emphasize. And I don't care what he says, too. He's look capping with the fact that he didn't really want to go to Golden State either. He wanted to go to Golden State. I, I firmly believe that if the opportunity would have went all the way through, you'd see LeBron very happy in Golden State. I think that he's not going to get traded from the Lakers anytime soon, but I think once his contract's up, he's going to go somewhere else if the opportunity presents itself to A, either win a championship because I don't think the Lakers are going to be winning a championship anytime soon, or B, like how you said, Jason, playing with Bronny. I think he's going to go play with Bronny eventually. And he might have to wait a while because Bronny Bronny might not come out this year. He's not going to be a one and done. No, I don't think he will either. But, I mean, LeBron, to me... I, I can't. I agree. He just lies all the time <laughs> just, about stuff. It's, it's funny. I enjoy it though. Yeah. At least it's not like it's, bad. It's funny. He just. It's not it, bad. It's, it's just like okay, dude. Like no, you didn't. Not one. It, it's not like <laughs> lying about like a crime or something. It, it's not anything that hurts anyone. But it's just like, come on, man. 
Now, it might hurt the Miami fans for if they remember the not one, not, not two, two, not three, three not, not four, four, not five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not so six. that yeah, that might that might hurt some Miami fans. My brother was only there for four years, and I mean, he didn't get anywhere <laughs> close to six championships. But I mean, again, I love him just as much as Mr. Chris Jacoby does. Maybe actually not as not much. not quite. I'm not much. writing him that's a love a little, letter. Yeah, that's a little that's that. a little different. Dear Pookie, nah, nah, nah. But LeBron, he's a little capping in this Dear case. Tom. Yes, we we've already uh, gotten that point across, especially Chris. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a cap. Uh, watching all the TikToks of him holding a book and uh, looking <laughs> through the uh, epilogue, <laughs> it, it's just hilarious. The table of contents. Uh, yeah, the the book. Uh, I've been reading it lately. It's uh. It's been good. It's been good. But anyways, it is the cap. I would love him to come to the Cavs, but that's just me being delusional. But he'll be he'll be going somewhere. He'll be going somewhere. Yeah, I I think we're all in agreement. He's a capper right here, LeBron. He might be the goat of like our generation, and everything, but it's the cap right now. It is totally the <laughs> cap. Now another topic here, kind of touching on LeBron. Of course, used to play for the Cavs. This is directly related here with the Cavs. Donovan Mitchell. He says he's happy where he is at right now. Guys, do we expect him to stay with the Cavs? I think it depends how the playoffs go. Like, first round exit, I think he's gone. But second round, I say it's 60-40. He will stay. Eastern Conference Finals, it's a lock for an extension. I think it just depends how far they go. And he has another year after this year, I believe, on his contract. So if you have to, you play it out to the end. And you'll have to trade him in a sign a trade. But we'll see. But I think he will extend because I think – they will go to at least the second round. I'm hoping Eastern Conference Finals. That's just me being hopeful, though. Well, it's uh, Cavs and four, Chris. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. East runs through Cleveland. East, it does East run through Cleveland, through Cleveland, so we'll see. I don't have to worry about Embiid in the playoffs. So mm. that's, mm. that, is, that is a weight off our shoulders. That is weight. Chris, it's funny you say that because that's his estimated uh, return. He won't be fully healthy, though. That's the thing. It takes time to get back. Yeah, it, it, is he ever fully healthy? It, it really does take time to get healthy. <laughs> I don't think we needed him last time we were in Cleveland. Hey, you got it's lucky. We play tonight. Game. We play tonight on ESPN. We're getting you this time on the road. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you there. Yes, Enough you with win. you two. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope Donovan Mitchell stays. I mean, if he's happy, we're happy. I'm glad he's here. He's doing great. If he's content with where he is and he wants to stay in Cleveland, by all means, give him the money he wants. I mean, that. I think we have a very solid squad here, and I think maybe we're one piece away from you know, ma- making it to the dance. So maybe he stays, he re-signs, and then we sign that final piece, and then we get to see another Cavs championship. That'd be that'd, pretty cool. That'd be nice. And I'll chip in again. I really do think Mitchell will re-sign. Like, just seeing the... The chemistry this Cavs team has is, like, insane. It's, like, the best I've seen this team come together. Uh, when uh, Mitchell, he was in the three-point contest, he got eliminated first round. That was sad. Money Merrill. The Money Merrill. The Money Merrill jersey. Like, just everyone has chemistry with each other, and I love it. It makes me, it makes me happy. It makes me happy, too, Ramsey. I'm glad it makes you happy. My, my answer is pretty simple. Yes and no. For as far as staying in Cleveland, because yes, he's going to sign a contract extension in Cleveland, and this is why the Cavs can give him the bag. Nobody else can give him the bag. He's going to sign a contract extension with the Cavs, but I could see this becoming a Damian Lillard situation. Damian Lillard signed a massive contract extension, then he's like, nah, I don't really want to be in Portland anymore. I want to get traded. I can see that happening with Donovan potentially if this team doesn't get, go super far in the playoffs all the time. So, Donovan's going to sign an extension in Cleveland, but if he stays past like five years, I'm still not really convinced yet because, again, it's going to be based off the success of the team. If they can't even get to a conference finals within like the next five years, he's going to sign the contract extension, make about 50 to $60 million a year. Then he's going to say, trade me in New York because I still stand by it. I think he wants to go to New York more than anything else. He wants to go home. So we'll see, though. We'll see. But personally, Donovan Mitchell, he will sign a contract extension, but maybe won't stay there for a super long time. But gentlemen, last kind of NBA topic that came out of All-Star Weekend that was kind of a little interesting. These guys are best buddies. Nikola Jokic, he mentioned that Luka Doncic could join him in Denver if he ever wants to because Jokic, the man who loves his horses, also apparently loves the city of Denver. He never wants to leave the Denver Nuggets, the defending NBA champions. Could you guys see this happening in the future? 
No, because playoff Jamal Murray is just a different breed. <laughs> yeah. Luka hasn't went far in the playoffs. I don't think he's went past the second round. I don't see it happening, ever happening, but they can stay great friends. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I'd cry if that happened, uh, having Jokic and Doncic on the same team. That'd be insane. But it won't happen. They they can enjoy their horses on their own. Yeah. I, I don't think Denver's uh, got the cap space or is willing to pay the yeah. money for two absolute superstars, three if you count Jamal Murray, which I probably would. <laughs> I, I don't think they have that kind of money. And like Chris said, playoff Doncic, he's just not it. I think it's fun to think about. Well, actually, not really because I would hate it if that happened, but – it's oh, yeah. like a really cool what if. I don't see it ever happening. I, I enjoy the jersey swap edits that <laughs> people do. And it's just insane. So for this, it's not going to happen in the very near future. But I definitely think it's a possibility down the line. So let's say both Doncic and Jokic are in like year 12 or 13 or whatever. And maybe they want to team up or something like that. I can maybe see something like that happening. Could you imagine the basketball IQ on the Denver Nuggets, though, if Luka Doncic and Nikola Jokic play together? That, I mean, that's a cheat code right there. That's like, like the European. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the European dream team right there. Like, it, it would just be utterly insane. He ain't, He's not going. And I think Jokic means this is kind of more like a joking matter. But, I mean, I can see it happening potentially. We've seen best friends in the NBA team up time and time again. So, maybe these two will team up, but it's not going to happen for the very near future at all. But all right, gentlemen, if we don't have anything else to really mention here about the NBA, we're going to transition over to Major League Baseball. Mr. Dylan Zepp is over there very excited about these different topics, it looks like. This is what I know. So (laughs) Mike Trout, guys, arguably the best baseball player of our generation, potentially. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, I would like to imagine. He didn't outwardly say that he once traded from his beloved Los Angeles Angels, but he let on that things must change enable, in, for him really not to leave the Angels is what I'm getting at here. Guys, can you see Trout potentially leaving the Angels someday? Uh, someday, yes. Yeah, he I should. feel like he needs to he needs just to. because the Angels aren't doing anything to build around him. Trout, he would be top five all time if it wasn't for those injuries. He had seven plus seasons of eight war or higher, including a 10.1 war in 2013. He's a three-time MVP. He finished second four times. He posted a 30-30 season in 2014, and he's the best player we've seen in our generation, maybe aside from Shohei Otani, but he has to leave. Like, Michael Nelson Trout, come to Cleveland. Oh, man. my, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, is, it, is, it, is it true that he hasn't played a single postseason game he, yet? He did. Is it he, did. he played he did. in 2014. Okay, last but only one. The Angels made the playoffs, just one. But just, that's yep. just Believe sad. No, he needs to leave. That's just sad. It makes me mad. It, it, it does. Like, like Chris just said, three-time MVP, rookie of the year. God. The lowest he finished in MVP, MVP voting from 2012 to 2019 – 2020, actually, was fifth. He was a top five MVP candidate every single year. The past three years, we have seen the rise of Shohei Otani, who is possibly the only man who could overtake him as the player of this generation because of his talent playing two-way baseball. And they still didn't make the playoffs. This Angels team has failed to reach the postseason since 2014. They have had eight straight losing seasons. Shohei has left at this point. I don't know what's left, and I will respect because some of his comments were he is committed to this contract. He's committed to the place he started, the place he grew up as a major leaguer. I 100% respect that. But when he's getting to the final years of this contract, I'm not going to be surprised. I don't think he'll request a trade. Uh, yeah, excuse me. Request, <laughs> request a trade. <laughs> However, if the Angels approach him and say, would you be interested in a trade, I think he will absolutely say yes. Mike. Mike. Mike, get get out of there, man! <laughs> get out! <laughs> You're, he's at the back end of his career, and he's still playing some of the best baseball of his career. More props to him because he is absolutely generational. But he want he wants change. I don't think getting rid of Shohei Otani was the change he had in mind. <laughs> Maybe it was, but I don't think it was. Every time I hear the name Mike Trout or Shohei Otani, I think of this tweet that says, "Every time I see an Angels highlight, it's like." Mike Trout hit three home runs and raised his average to 528, while Shohei Otani did something that hasn't been done since Tungsten Armo Doyle of the 1921 Akron Groomsman as the Tigers defeated the Angels 8-3. to <laughs> Like, how, how do you have two of the best baseball players in the last 50 years 
and you can't even go to the uh, playoffs. <laughs> The playoffs. It actually man. is. That's more sad than the Pirates. I'm just going to say oh, that. It, it absolutely is. That's, that's more sad it than is. the Pirates. The Pirates don't spend money, and they still made, made it to the playoffs more than the Angels, I think. Nope. That's actually that's actually yeah. insane. Yeah. yeah. What what I need to add, I respect the heck out of Trout for staying. That's the type of player I'd want to play with, not even considering talent. But if he does leave – I, I I don't think he'd go very far. I think he's gonna stay in oh, Los Angeles. Don't no, summon that and go to the Dodgers. And, oh, and you know what's gonna happen? I would just stop following baseball. <laughs> Ra- Ramsey knows what's gonna happen. <laughs> They're gonna meet the Pirates in the NLCS, and we're gonna use the power of friendship. Yeah, baby. To beat the Hunter and <laughs> Pirates Guardians World to Series to win. Yeah, the power of friendship. I'm okay with it. Game seven, keep Brian A's walk off. Oh, O'Neal Cruz. Oh yeah, O'Neal Cruz. Oh yard. Uh, okay, the Pirates. Pirates the Pirates. Y- yes, yes. The Pirates might not make the World Series or this year or the next four years, but Whatever. I'm encouraged to see them play this year because we just recently extended uh, Mitch Keller. Mm-hmm. It's the highest uh, we've given to a starting pitcher in quite some time since what was it, Liriano? I think Liriano. Yeah. Liriano, yeah. That was in like 2013. Because you guys traded for our contract. Yeah, yeah. Chris Archer? Yeah. Bum. Exactly. Hey, guys, remember John Neese? <laughs> I'll cry. <laughs> Enough pirate stock. This Not now, Tom. <laughs> Anywho, anyone else that wants to voice their opinion? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mr. Of course. Jacob. I don't think, if Mr. Trout were to leave, I don't think he'd necessarily go to the Dodgers. I think that some of us forget this man's a diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan because he is a Philly man himself. So I think that... Mike Trout could go team up with Bryce Harper potentially someday and go play in the Philadelphia Phillies. See, I'm not much of a Bryce Harper fan, so I personally would not like that at all. But I think that's Trout's best chance of going and getting a World Series ring. And, I mean, honestly, what does this man owe the Los Angeles Angels? Why is he so loyal to them? I, other than the fact that they're writing his paycheck out for like half or yeah, half a billion dollars essentially is what they're giving him right now. So, I mean – I'd rather have a World Series at this yep. point, too, because, I mean, anytime we're going to talk about Mike Trout, it'll be that thing of, like, yeah, he's a great baseball player, but he could never even win a freaking postseason series ever, which is I absolutely absurd. Game. Yeah, game. He's, yeah, yeah, that's even a better point. Player, never won a playoff game. He's yeah, pretty much That's Phillip not Rivers. even a question, yeah. He's pretty much Philip Rivers. What? <laughs> 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 better than Philip Rivers. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hey, Rivers yeah. just enjoyed having I think that'd be Breeze not winning a playoff game. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it'd be I, that level. I'm just playing. But uh, <laughs> hey, the Phillies, that's a good pick there. Shout out uh, the Dombrowski effect. Yeah. Uh, that, that, I, that's legit. I mean, that's legit. Yeah. And, I mean, with Trout, I mean, he'd just be he's just wasting his career with the Angels. I mean, I'm not necessarily, like, a baseball mega fan. I don't really care that much. But it personally kind of ticks me off that Mike Trout's just like, yeah, I'm going to be loyal to the Angels because it's a continuous cycle with the Angels there, guys. It's, oh, start off the season strong. Oh, fake optimism. And then it's like, well, let's not trade anybody at the trade deadline because why would we do that? And like maybe rebuild because we actually stink. And then they go and plummet in the second half of the season. It's always like that. And Mike Trout, I mean, he's just seen it his whole career. So just leave the Angels, Mike Trout. Please, please leave the Angels. But now, other topic we're going to talk about here with Major League Baseball. Some top free agents are still left in spring training right now. Just to name a few, Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, Jordan Montgomery, J.D. Martinez. They're still on the market. Where do you think these guys will land? And if there's anybody else you guys want to highlight too, go for it. Oh, well, Blake Snell, he was the NL Cy Young last year. Posted 225 ERA, 234 strikeouts, and ranked in the 100th percentile in pitching run value breaking run value and off-speed run value he's elite i don't know where he'll end up but it sounds like there's several teams in the mix but i'm gonna go the yankees i hate the yankees i still think they're frauds like always they'll find a way to lose in the alcs but i think he goes to the yankees and cody bellinger have at it man what a resurgent resurgent year in chicago 307 batting average 881 ops 26 home runs 4.1 war I don't know where he'll land. I would love for Cleveland, but that ain't happening. Let's be real. But maybe the Giants, not for sure. And Jordan Montgomery, he had an excellent season. Posted a 320 ERA, 93rd percentile in pitching run value and in fastball run value. I think he ends up in Boston. And J.D. Martinez, still valuable power hitter at 36 years old. 271 batting average, 893 OPS, 33 homers, 135 WRC+. Plus. In a 2.2 war. Hey, Cleveland, there's a guy. Hmm. 
this is where I'm concerned. We are spring training games have begun. They begun yesterday at the time of recording this, like where the Dodgers brutalized the Padres as everyone expected. We're, we got a bunch of big names left on the table, and they all have one thing in common. Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, Jordan Montgomery, J.D. Martinez, Matt Chapman all have the same agent as Scott Boris. We have started spring training, and none of them have signed. We have last year's Cy Young winner still waiting to see where he goes as teams are playing games. It, it's kind of concerning for baseball itself that these names are still on the table. The only name that I've heard any rumors about, are it, it is Blake Snell where I've heard rumors for Yankees, Giants, and Angels being the three on the table right now, possibly. Mm. Only one of these names I've heard rumors about. That's insane at this point in the season, yeah. which has started, and no one is on a team. I don't know what to think at this point. Yeah, like, this is great for the Guardians, though, if they're looking to add somebody on a cheaper deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I will talk later for half a second. All Do right, not man. add any of these players. Take the rookies we have right now. I, I think I like we have this. potential in our rookies. Yeah. We picked up Division de los Santos. Still not sold on that, but he's got power. Rock with what we have. We have as if our pitching holds up, we will win the division just based on that. I'm happy with the with the roster right now. That that's my two cents. Okay, that's uh, Florio. I'm excited to see what he does out that's there. That's very field, so. that's very valid. But uh, I think Bellinger should definitely come to the Pirates, even though that won't happen because you know we we don't we don't spend money. Yeah. We, we don't know how. We just know how to extend players as of late, which I'm shocked. When we extended Keller, that was very exciting. Very good deal. That was very exciting for me to read. Five five years, five mil or something. Ramsey, that's a start. That's a start. We didn't even extend players before. We're, we're moving in the right direction. Oh, yes. Reynolds, Hayes, Keller. O'Neill Cruz within a year. O'Neill Cruz will hopefully be extended. Hopefully have a breakout year this year. But Bellinger should definitely – we need to sign someone. Even Snell, but I don't think that'll happen. Snell will probably end up in the Yankees, along with Cole and them. But Belly needs to come to the Pirates. Bob Nutting and Charrington, please stop being a bunch of nerds and just spend money. We have the cap for it. For at least one of them. One of them, not two, but just one of them. I would, I would prefer Bellinger. What about you, Tom? I don't really think there's a bad answer amongst any of that, but I kind of agree. I think it seemed like last year, whenever the Pirates would – you know, have a good offensive game and put up runs, the pitching would be awful. But on the flip side of that, it kind of seemed like whenever the Pirates would have some, like, just standout defensive games, the offense would go ex- uh, extend. Man, I really can't talk today. It's kind of <laughs> sad. But the uh, the offense would disappear. It, I, I don't know if that's just me, but I kind of feel like adding more to the offense would be more important. Yeah, I I agree with you there. I think it's uh, Oviedo's out for the entire year. That 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 he he was that, so hit or miss. That, but his potential. I his yeah. Potential is yes, I feel like he would have had a breakout the year this year. But Oviedo going down. Brubaker will be back. So Keller, Brubaker, Contreras, Paul Skeens, Libby. Dun- oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, I mean come on, wrong. man. You guys are jealous. Hey, was that Akron? Or she was at Akron. Cle- yeah. Cleveland doesn't have that. Cleveland doesn't have Libby Dunn. All right, all right. We have Jose Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a quick note on Jose Ramirez because there is a note I need to bring up for one quick free agent signing. Tim Anderson has signed with the Miami Marlins for a one-year $5 million deal. The Cleveland Guardians will be in Miami from June 7th to June 9th. Must watch TV. Uh, yes. Tim Stereo. Anderson out for three days. <laughs> Foot contusion. Yes. <laughs> Continue on. Tim Anderson's a bum. Uh... We got Jake. Jake. All right, here we go. So, Blake Snell, New York Yankee. I agree. Unfortunately, I don't want to see it happen, but Blake Snell is going to be a New York Yankee. Cody Bellinger, I think if he's smart, he goes back to Chicago just for maybe like another year or two and then see what the market has in store after that. Jordan Montgomery, I think, should go back to the Texas Rangers as well. I, I don't see any reason why he should leave Texas. I mean, they're, they literally won the World Series, and he was he was a part of that. So I think that he should go back to Texas. J.D. Martinez, I think he's going to go either to the Arizona Diamondbacks, provide them some hitting, or the Toronto Blue Jays as well, provide them some extra power there with Vladdy Jr. So we'll see what happens. Definitely a lot of big names, very interesting. But we're going to switch gears here once again. This isn't really a particular sports kind of topic here, gentlemen. This is kind of an interesting little thing that came up in my mind after this news story broke here earlier this week. Matthew Slater, retired from the New England Patriots, 
Very underappreciated player for the New England Patriots dynasty. One of the greatest special teamers of all time. But he was one of the last members of that Patriots dynasty still in New England. So, gentlemen, my question. Do the Patriots have the greatest football dynasty of all time? And who else ranks up there for football? Yes. Yeah, I would say they do. Slater, shout out. Future Hall of Famer, special teams GOAT. But you have to, I'm a Browns fan. You have to shout out the Steelers dynasty, especially in the 70s, the Steel Curtain. Like You have to shout them out. They're top three. And the 49ers are right there, I believe, in the 80s and the Packers. Packers are such an historic dynasty as well. But shout out to those teams. What Packers dynasty are you talking about right now? I'm talking about the 60s. Bro. And I'm talking about those 50s Browns. Quit talking about plumbers. <laughs> All right. Quit All right. talking about plumbers and NFL but, yeah, championships. Patriots won. I'm going to say Patriots won. But dynasty that just ended. And Steelers second seventies and Forty Niners eighties third. I, I think I, I agree with yes, the list. That, I think that, right outside perfect. that list is the currently ongoing and beginning Chiefs dynasty. Otherwise, hundred mm-hmm. percent agree with that. I list. hope they fall quickly. <laughs> <laughs> fall quickly. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to deal with the Chiefs dynasty, but it's looking like we are going to. I would have to say Patriots, absolutely. We just gotta I'm I'm sorry, Jason. No, you're good, you're good. As much as I hate to admit it, the Steelers, yes, six rings don't lie. It's just it's just the facts. And I would probably have to agree with Dylan with the Chiefs on the up and coming. <laughs> my my take on this may uh warrant some disapproval. I have to go Steelers and here's the reason. <sighs> it's not it's not because I'm from Pittsburgh. Here's my reason. Don't moan. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> my, my reasoning for this is that I, I I really think that the Patriots dynasty should be split into two. That that Valid. That, okay. that, that that's my reasoning for it. Valid. I think if you go a decade without winning a championship, they they should be separate. Uh, that's great that they went to two Super Bowls and lost over that span. But if we're doing that, then we have to count the uh, ni- early '90s Bills as a dynasty too. I, I think they're completely separate things. That's why I have the Steelers at one, and then those two. Uh, spans of Patriots would be like right below there, followed by the 49ers. Yeah, going back to that Bills point, the four straight Super Bowl losses. Uh, I, wow. I don't know what I would do. It's rough. I, I don't know what I would do. I would but it's good up. that it's not me, so <laughs> I, I, whatever. I would give up. I would never watch sports again. I would cry. <laughs> I would, I would, I would. Be done. I, That's it. I would We're retire. Calling that a day. I would retire. <laughs> yeah, to, I'd retire to where there's no Wi-Fi, no internet. I'd just bring my guitar, <laughs> build a cabin out in the woods. Peaceful life. That's deep. Very deep. Jacob. All right, Ramsey. Thanks for throwing it over to me, pal. <laughs> for me, I'm gonna go the same direction as Mr. Tom Dry. I didn't, I wasn't thinking. I, I got to shout you out, Tom, about splitting the Patriots dynasty up into two. That's not where I was thinking. I was just thinking, in general, the Steel Curtain is the greatest football dynasty of all time because they won four Super Bowls in six years, and they never lost in a Super Bowl appearance there as well. I don't think you can go wrong with picking the Patriots, though, either because they truly are just one of the most impressive franchises of all time, and the 49ers are right in third. But I got... Steelers, and then very closely behind, you got the Patriots, and then the 49ers are down there a little bit too with Joe Montana and Steve Young. But Steel Curtain got one of the greatest defenses of all time, many Hall of Famers, got a great quarterback, got a great running back. Rest in peace to Franco Harris. Even even as a Browns fan, love Franco Harris, I got to admit. So shout out to all those guys, Lynn Swan as well on that offense. Just an incredible Hall of Fame crew, and I, I think Steel Curtain's the best dynasty of all time. Just got to say it. Shout out the 74 draft. Five Hall of Famers, and we assigned a undrafted free agent, Donnie Shell, that became a, the sixth Hall of Famer. So, uh, crazy. I enjoy yeah, uh, Jack Lambert, yeah. and he, Jack Lambert had beef with kickers, <laughs> so much beef with kickers it shocked me. Just watching the film on him, it, it's funny him beating up on kickers. I bet you remember those days, don't you? Those glory days. I watched film. No, I don't know. You remember those days? I know you're around. How many playoff games have you been alive for that the Browns have won, Chris? Besides one. Besides one. One over the Pittsburgh Steelers. One over Steelers, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Idea. So we're the best dynasty in the world. I mean, I was That's technically crazy. alive for two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> technically, I just don't remember it because I was like six months old. What, what, what was that? In 2003. I don't know. I Like I said, oh, I was six. Isn't that when the Steelers, Steelers, when the Steelers, Steelers lost the to the playoffs. Titans? The Steelers missed the playoffs in 2003. That's why we got the draft then in 04. No, that's what I'm saying for the Browns. Oh. 
Wait. Oh, I thought you said over the steering wheel. I missed. No, 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 no. That's no, you idea. silly geese. No, you're good. I'm silly sorry. Billy. Chris confused me. He said something. All right, enough from our Steelers and Browns. Yes. Here we go. Steelers. Yeah, because now we're going to move on to another league as far as Dynasty goes. Greatest NBA Dynasties. This could be a little controversial. There's a lot. So, I mean, I, if anybody wants to touch on it. I got this. Oh, boy. Lakers, number one. They have been dominant in pretty much every era. Yeah, Wilt in the 60s. Now he ran into Bill Russell, and he lost most of the time. But that's championships in the 60s. Then you go to the Showtime Lakers in the 80s. Magic, Kareem. Uh, James Worthy. The list goes on. That was a stack team. Then you had the early 2000s, Kobe and Shaq. Absolute dynasty right there. And not so much now, but they did win a championship, so you still got to give it to them. Paul the 2020s, LeBron James and these current Lakers. I say they're number one. Then I probably have to put the Bulls. I mean, you, you can't not put Michael Jordan in there. Just absolute dominance for 10 to 15 years. And you know, everyone says Celtics. The, the Celtics were before, like, barely post-segregation era. Like, <laughs> like right. mo- most of their championships came in the 60s. Okay. What have the Celtics done in the last 30 years? But, That's, see, they got 11 titles in 13 years, and a bunch of them were against... In, in an eight-team league, though. Well, but, yes, yeah. that's valid, but... Then you said that the 60s Lakers, they beat the 60s Lakers, they I did. believe, about five to six times in those finals runs. But, so... See, my definition of dynasty is, like, continued greatness. Even if there's breaks in between, but, like, like it's always consistent. The Lakers mm-hmm. were consistent, like, mm-hmm. in every era. Like the they, had, they had at least a couple-year stretch in every era of basketball. The Celtics haven't had that in. Yeah, Boston's was more 60s dominant. They won a title with Dave Cowens, JoJo White, mm-hmm. and John Havlicek in the 70s, yeah. post Bill Russell. And then in the 80s, they came back with Larry Bird. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. 60s of the 80s, they were definitely up there. But, yeah, now they, they haven't really done anything. They've only won one championship since the 80s. Yeah. So. And you got to – well, I'm going to – here's my list. I'm going to say uh, 80s Lakers. I'm going to go 80s Showtime. Lakers. Showtime. Showtime. 90s Bulls, tied for first. Yep. And uh, you got to mention the Warriors. Uh, that dynasty is unreal. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. And I would – would you say the dynasty is still going on for that period? Because they did win, no. what, two years ago? No. Uh, you, it, it, you think it's over probably now? Well, yeah. Because they – I mean, they Four. don't even get to the conference finals last year, and then this yeah, year they're barely going to uh, make the playoffs if even, so – but yes, shout out the '80s Lakers. Okay. Does anybody else want to add anything to that? I would actually. Okay, there we go, Tom. <laughs> the ABA '76ers. <laughs> '76ers making it to the second round for the ABA hey, Don't kill them. I don't want to cry. Not, <laughs> not on the show. Uh, low key, the Warriors. Yeah. It's not bad. They're not. They're. 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 I don't know that they're top five, but they're up there. Here's one I don't think was mentioned. I may have missed it, but the San Antonio Spurs. Ooh, that's, 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 that's a, good a good very good that's one. Good very good so one. From, 90 to, from 99 to 2007. <laughs> four championships. Tim they won Ginobili, over 71% of their games. That That is a really underrated team to me, truthfully. So, thank, you for good. Bringing, for, thank you for bringing that up, Tom. It's just, Absolutely. It's very valid. Very valid. Indeed. All right. No. Personally... I think there's only one correct answer here, and again, I don't think we're all in agreement with this. Okay. It's the 90s Bulls. I mean, yeah. they won six yeah. titles in eight years. They would have won eight titles in eight years if Michael Jordan wouldn't have retired for a season and a half, and then they came back and lost to Shaq. You mean got suspended for gambling under the table? Oh, hey, That's a topic for a different day right there, pal. But the my goat White LeBron would never. Play for the Chicago White Sox. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, Michael Jordan – that whole entire run is the greatest single run in NBA history. I mean, from a championship standpoint, technically the 60s Celtics. But I agree with you, Jason. Very different NBA kind of landscape there. So that's why I don't think they're one of the, that they're the greatest. I definitely think they are one of the greatest. They might be in like my top three, top five, something like that. To me... Showtime Lakers, both editions are up there for dynasty purposes as well. You got the 80s Lakers with Magic, and then you got Showtime with Shaq and Kobe as well. Those are definitely up there. I'd probably say they're number two. But to me, you can't change my mind ever that we're going to see almost anything like it again in NBA history, like Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. It's just that simple. Six titles in eight years, and again, gambling or not, (laughs) going and playing baseball, whatever. They would have won eight championships in eight years. I don't care what anybody says. They would have won eight straight championships. I'm fully convinced by that. And 
it's just the greatest run that we've ever seen. He held guys, Michael Jordan held guys like Carl Malone away from winning an NBA championship. Hakeem Olajuwon, for crying out loud, is one of the best players in NBA history. He almost didn't get a ring. He got his rings when Michael Jordan retired right there. So it wasn't until that where he could actually go and actually get a ring. So Michael Jordan, pure dominance. The Bulls are the greatest NBA dynasty in my mind. And last league we're going to touch, though. Best MLB dynasties of all time. Go ahead, there, there is, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it, a correct answer here. The New York Yankees made their first World Series appearance in 1921. We are in 2024, and they have been in 40 total appearances. They have nearly been in 40% of World Series since their first appearance. I may hate the evil empire, but you you can't take that away from them. The stretches they have gone on. They won in... The, the long one was 47, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, lost in 55, 1 in 56, 1 in 58. Like, it's insane. Their, their most recent stretch, at least a while back, they won in 96, 98, 99, 2000. They did make it in 01 and 03, but lost. Like, that is undeniably the correct answer here. And with the way baseball is, there has not been a streak in recent history. Like, the, the most recent ones that I will give credit to for nearly being a dynasty would be the San Francisco Giants in yeah, 10, 12, and 14. Mm-hmm. And then as much as there are a lot of asterisks upon the first few years of it, you do have to give credit to the Houston Astros. They have been in the mm-hmm. AL Championship every year since 2017. That so there are Jeez. asterisks on the first three years of that where they won it in 17, and they lost it to the Nationals in 19, and they made it to the championship in 18. There are asterisks on those three years, but you cannot take away what they've done beyond that. So I think there's the amount of history in baseball. There's a lot of different streaks you could pull up, but the answer is the New York Yankees. Unfortunately, I have to agree with that, but shout out. There's two dynasties that are underrated to me, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Boston Red Sox. That's all I got to say. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Don't want to give the Astros any credit, so I won't. The Yankees do deserve it as much as I hate to admit it. They they do. They, I mean, absolute story franchise for hundred or hundred plus years now, like Dan <laughs> mentioned. But I, I do agree with Chris. I think Boston Red Sox are a little underappreciated as a dynasty. Yeah, shout out, shout out, Red Sox. Here we go. Nineteen seventies Pittsburgh Pirates. Hey, we are family, right? Isn't yeah, that? we are yeah. family, baby. Sister Tom. Sledge. Tom. Yeah, uh, that was pretty chill. Uh, that. Uh, Obviously, I wasn't alive for that. I think we all know oh, that. Wow. Yeah. wow. Couldn't have guessed. <laughs> crazy. Wow. Wait, you're not 55 years old? <laughs> no. A bit 40 years short of that. <laughs> you're 15? Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> What'd you say? 50, 50, oh, that's irrelevant, whatever. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, the 70s Pirates, what was it, two World Series yeah. in that time? But it wasn't a big dynasty, so but in so it was a it was a tiny it was a tiny little dynasty that uh, I'm sure my dad enjoyed. <laughs> and nothing since, you know, nothing since. This go is, Bucks. Yes, yeah, go Bucks, Ramsey. I'm here for it. Here's here's a different one that not a lot of people talk about. It's an underrated one, I think. It wasn't long term, but arguably the it's one of the greatest three year stretches in all of baseball history. The 1972, the 1975 Oakland A's. Yep. Three World Series appearances, three titles. Mm. Reggie Jackson, Mr. October, dominating. He won his first two World Series MVP awards there in that little stretch. Obviously, it wasn't long term, but that's one heck of a stretch. I, yeah. You know, three and three, I, I definitely call that a dynasty. Yeah, to me, just like the Bulls, the only correct answer here is the New York Yankees at multiple times in their history. And I think the only one that we've even come close to seeing potentially, like since we've been alive, the only two I should say. Shout out Boston Red Sox again, Dustin Pedroia, David Ortiz, all those guys breaking the curse of the great Bambino. Love it very much. And then I got to say, it's got to be the Giants for me, I think are honestly like the best dynasty since we've been alive, since we've all been alive. That was impressive. I mean... I don't know how the heck they managed to do it. You win a World Series, then you finish, what, fourth or fifth in your division, and then you come back, win another one, same thing again. And it's just crazy. Absolute crazy. The stat that blows me away the most from that dynasty and the new era of power hitting we've hit, their last 30 home run hitter was Barry Bonds. <laughs> Not They've won three World Series since they had a 30 home run hitter. That's like, crazy. Full credit to them. 
It's impressive. Ballot Hall of Famer Barry Bonds. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest oh, baseball boy. player of all time, Barry Bonds. <laughs> oh, no, no, no doping controversies here, please. There's PC. Here. Yeah, no doping controversies, please. But anyway, now we're going to get to our last call, final little thing that we're going to be talking about here today on the topic of great teams, gentlemen. What is one team that you wish you could go back to, go back and watch in person? Oh, the Cavs Warriors game seven. If I could go see yeah. that in person, that would that was the greatest day of my life. Shout out my the Pookie Bear, LeBron James. Hey, shout out Kyrie though. And Kyrie, Kyrie. Kyrie. and Uncle Kevin Love. Drew. Kevin Uncle Love Drew. locking up. J. R. Smith, the J. big three. Matthew Delavado, yeah. Tristan Thompson, Matthew Delavado, locking up Curry. I love everybody on that team. Thank you. He's changed my life forever. And he made me happy for once in my life. I'm gonna go back to something that everyone here can relate to, and are very close to home for. Back in 1993, when the greatest college football dynasty of all time began, when the Mount Union Purple Raiders oh. went to the Stag Bowl for the very first time, oh, beat okay. the Rowan Pro... I guess they're the professors? Yeah, they're the or, profs. Yeah. The profs? They won... I don't know. It's an interesting mascot, but the very first Mount Union title, and they won 34-24 to for the very first time, for the very first game in Salem. Jim Ballard takes home the first ever Gagliardi Trophy. It, that's history in the making right there. That I want to go back and see that and game. Shout out Larry Karras, the yes, greatest, greatest college football coach of all time. 11 national championships, 23 conference championships. The GOAT. I love you, LK. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, my. Jeez. Saban's got nothing on him. That's right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Will would fight me for saying that. Mr. Yeah. Will Moore. Uh I personally wish I could go. I mean, I was alive for it, but go back uh, for the 2016-2017 Stanley Cup run by the Pittsburgh Penguins, the back-to-back run. It was just oh, it's good times, Tom. It's good times. <laughs> There's. I'd like to pick one, but I can't. We, we so, can take two answers. I think we can do that. Better yet, you're getting three. Oh, even better. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. The 79 World Series. Because I know I'll never see it again. 2028, we're winning the World Series. <laughs> Darn right, Ramsey. <laughs> the uh, 91 Penguins. This mm. is the first Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. I, I'd take any of them, but I think the first one would be, you know, different. Start of the dynasty of Yager and Lemieux. Absolutely. Shout out, yeah, Yaromir Yager. 68's in the rafters. He'd love to see it. And then finally... I was tempted. I was tempted to say Super Bowl nine, but I'm going to say Super Bowl 43. I know I was alive for it, but I think out of the six Super Bowls the Steelers have won, that was the best game. And if I was at that game, I, I, I would have cried. I would have cried. I know. I know. I would have. That sounds weird. But I love my. No, Steelers. no, Tom. We all, we all agree. Sport, sports, the sports are passion. I cried when the Cavs won in 2016. I did as well. I uh, cried when the Penguins went back to back. I, I, I even cried when Pitt won the ACC. I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Pickett's fake slide. I mean. <laughs> The goat, <laughs> better than Marino. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, and he invented I, a rule. True. Low key, the '76 national championship team, Pitt Panthers would be cool too. Mm-hmm. But the okay. it's bad. I, it's bad. any of those, I would give anything to see or see those teams win another championship. Eh, too bad that can't happen. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go a little different and stay away from the hometown team. Hometown team. Because with the exception of the Cavs in 2016, which I did watch, there's really nothing unless you go back to like the 1940s. 48. 48. Doesn't count. Uh, go to 64. Cleveland Browns. Jim Brown. Shout out. Shout out the GOAT. Uh, Jim Brown. God. I'm going to go for a team. I want to see, like, it doesn't even have to be a playoff or finals. Like, I just want to see the Kobe and Shaq Lakers play. I think Good that play. would be an electric experience. Yeah. For player. We're staying in the early 2000s NBA. You have a question? Give me the answer. Oh, I want to see Allen Iverson. Oh, I was born a little too late and started watching basketball a little too late to see him be great. I wish I could see him play in person at least one time. Yeah, I I saw AI play one time, but it was when he was with the Denver Nuggets, like <laughs> whenever him and Carmelo. So I mean, that was one of my first Cavs games I ever went to. But I, I liked what you were saying right there, Jason. Those are great picks for me. 
I went kind of with a player too that I would want to see more than more than anything in this world. Michael Jordan. I want to see Michael Jordan play, and it would be any addition of the Bulls. I don't want to see him playing when he was on the Wizards at all, yeah. but I want to see Michael Jordan when he's on the Bulls. I've seen guys. I've seen LeBron play many times. I've seen Shaq. I've seen Kobe. AI. I've seen all these different legends play in person. Nothing would be like watching Michael Jordan in a Chicago Bulls uniform going down the court, watching that happen. And another, so some other ones, because I couldn't come up with just one either. Price, Doherty, Nance, Cavs back in the 90s, yeah. just at least one time. I mean, I'd, I've watched much film like about those guys because big time Cavs fans, so I've definitely watched some of their games in the past, but nothing would be like going to see them in person. Then the honorable mention ones, this would be a specific game. 80s Showtime Lakers versus the Boston Celtics. That would be absolutely insane. And at TD Garden, too, because TD Garden's got the greatest atmosphere back in the day when those games. So that would be anything there to me. And really, any era of the doctor. Watching Dr. J mm. play with the Philadelphia 76ers. Big afro or not, love Dr. J. Yeah. One of my favorite basketball players in the history of the NBA, even though I never got to watch him play. Guys, some... NCAA news that happened this afternoon. There's a preliminary injunction against the NCAA and their NIL rules. I did see that. So that overall what that means is I'm pretty sure college players can get paid a lot for the next few weeks until this moves forward at all, if I'm understanding it correctly. I, I just, I just found money it. Away, I, guess. I just found it. But uh, hmm. it they're finding that the NCAA likely violates federal antitrust laws and harms student athletes. Nice. So, so this could, yeah. this, this could. I don't this want to say blow line. up the NCAA. NCAA football but. 25 is not happening. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. It's let, happening. Let me dream. And Mount Union will be in it. I have to make them if I have to. Yeah, Jason, what's your problem? <laughs> But Very interesting. They can't yeah, keep their act together. I feel that's important news. I would. I, I. I want to be leading uh, the Pitt Panthers to uh, <laughs> a national championship in NCAA yeah. twenty-five. Mountain Union Phil Purple Raiders winning a Division One. <laughs> that's that's dream, baby. <laughs> Saving who? Saving who? Stomping Alabama. <laughs> Go, Addy. Go to D one. Immediately get Arch Manning as a transfer. That's the key. Yes, right there. exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, in, in real life too, if Arch wants to come over to Mountain Union, I mean, we'll I, take him. I'll take him. I'll show him the loops. Hey, top recruiter Chris Jacoby, get on that. Yeah, Chris, come on. Chris Manning, welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> welcome home, indeed. Well, all right. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Yeah, it's been fun again, gentlemen. Great pod again. Great pod. Great job. Great job. Alrighty, we are signing off here from Raiders Zone. Have a good one, everyone. Go Raiders. Perfect.